So let's go ahead and look at the map function, which is a very important function that I use all the time in my day-to-day -day work. So very similar to how filter works, map takes a callback function, which accepts three arguments, which is uh, the element, the index, and the original array. And what this function does is it's basically going to return you a, a new array with the same length of the old array. And every element that's in that new array is going to be the output of the function that you've passed into the callback. So basically it's going to apply the function to every single element and then the output is going to be your new elements. And again, this does not modify the existing array. It's going to return a brand new array with the same length. All right, so for the first example I'm going to do, let's just go ahead and fill out an array of length four with some numbers. So I'll say one, two, three, four. And we're going to write a math function which is going to just square these. So basically, one will become one, two will become four, three will become nine, four will become 16. So to do that, we need to again pass map a callback function. And I'm going to say pass it in, fat arrow if you're familiar with ES6. So in is my element that we're looking at. And then I'm going to return the number times itself. So now if we were to step through the map function over this original array and look at the outputs, Let's just simply do that. So the first one, we're going to look at one here. And so one's going to come up here. One times one is equal to one. So this is going to return one. So our new array is going to have the same length as the old one. And the first element is going to be one. And then we come back and we look at two. So we have two is our argument. Two times two is going to equal four. So we're going to put four inside of that new location here. And then we move on to yet another one called three. And we check three. Three times three is going to return nine. And we could just put nine at this location. And then finally we do four. And we do four times four and that's going to be a 16. So let me undo all that and put a 16 here. So again, pretty straightforward. We have a new array here as the same length of the existing array. And all the elements are just going to be the output of whatever your function is. So whatever your function returns, that's your new output. And let's look at this in JSBin with the same array. All right, so if you look here, we have the same array, one, two, three, four. We have our map function, which is our callback here. So in fat arrow, in times in. And then we're simply doing array.map to get our new mapped array. So let me just print out the original array first and then finally the mapped array underneath that. So if you notice here, we have the same output as we just did in our example, one, four, nine, and 16. Let's just go over and verify 1, 4, 9, and 16. And then also notice that the original array was not modified in any way whatsoever. So let's go ahead and do one more example to kind of understand what's going on. So for this next example, we're going to try to map this array of lowercase characters to an array of uppercase characters. We're going to be using a string helper function called to uppercase if you're not familiar with it. But basically what we want to do is for every element character that we see, we just want to convert it to an uppercase character. So again, we can use map to kind of do this for us. So if we were to pass in a callback function, so C, fat arrow, and then I could simply just do C dot to uppercase. Bear with me, it's kind of hard to write in this. All right, two, uppercase. I need to buy like a tablet or something so I can actually write. I'm just using my mouse right now, so it's kind of a pain. But anyway, so sorry for the uh, legibility, but basically the string object has a function called two uppercase. 
And when you call it, it's going to convert your characters inside that string to an uppercase string. So let's again run through this example. So first we're going to look at the A here. And that's going to call A dot to uppercase, which is going to give us a capital A. And then we're going to be putting that inside our first element of our new array. And then finally, we're going to look at B. We have a lowercase b for our C argument. We're going to call two uppercase for that. And that's going to produce us a capital B. And then step forward, we have a lowercase c for our C argument. That's going to be converted to a capital C. And we're going to put that here. And then finally, we look at D. So we have a lowercase d here. Lowercase d, we call two uppercase. And that's going to become a capital D. If you notice, our new array is going to have capitals A, B, C, and D as the same length as the other one. Basically, every element is just converted to capital case. So let's again move over to JSBin and try that out. So if I go here and just change my array to A, B, C, and D, we need to change our map function to be what it was in that example. So I can say C fat arrow C dot two upper case and call it because it's a function. So now if I were to run this code, notice that our new array or the array that just got mapped is going to have all those same elements, everything converted to uppercase. So similar to the filter function, your callback can include an integer or it can include um, additional arguments. So the next argument we're in your callback would be the index. And then the third argument would be your original array if for whatever reason you wanted to use these. So let's say, we, for example, we wanted to append the index to our uppercase letter. We could do something like this. And if I run this, we should get A0, B1, C2, and D3. And then for the original array, I'm not, not too sure when you, you know, have a good use case for needing the original array because obviously you could just access ARR up here. But hey, it might be useful in some cases. All right, so that kind of wraps up our map tutorial. 